So in this video, I'm going to go over uh, a couple of particular pointers, nothing too major. Uh, another pointer on spies, because spies are effectively or pretty much uh, my favorite card type in the game. And I just have another pretty good example of using it, especially in the Nilfgaard faction. Uh, as you know, Nilfgaard has a lot of spy synergy. And when you play, whenever you play your spy, it's not just a, you know, it doesn't just a negative card advantage give you card advantage. Or it's not a negative strength advantage give you card advantage. It's also obviously has the spy tag that also that can um, synergize of course with something like Menno. you can excuse me you can destroy it right away but also with your impaired brigades and with your impaired enforcers so keeping that in mind you'll see throughout this match I set up uh, in such a way that I get the most value I could possibly can with that spy and I'll probably just fast forward this a little bit because it's a little bit boring I think I was playing a little bit slow, like both this and the previous game I was playing, I was just playing it pretty slow. Uh, not necessarily because there was difficult decisions to make, but I was just distracted and tired. So I opened up with um, Cynthia. Reveal a card, pull out the golem, very important. I really don't want to draw into that golem. I use my spine, my infiltrator to toggle this spine tag. Uh, funnily enough, he pulled out a villain Trent and Mirth, which is something I haven't seen in a while. I capitalize on hitting that 7 strength with this guy, so I get maximum value. This guy was playing the kind of a weird deck. I don't know, it was weird. Like, I don't even like taking notice of, like, Novice or, like, Borderless, because I basically, I'm hustling that same kind of thing, too. <laughs> uh, just in general, I think all the borders look kind of gaudy, especially the new Tavern Master, or whatever it's called, the Mahakim. Beer drinking fast one it looks really gaudy. It's like one huge golden cup. It's like right up, right above your name or right above your portrait. It looks silly. So with the course of this match, of course, I am setting up this uh, all these synergies again. I kind of like I think about trying to hit this, but then he pulls off a really funny move. <laughs> he heals it. He heals the villain front of earth. Now it's basically impossible for me to do anything about that because I believe it goes off right now. Yes, that's right. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, like I feel like a gut reaction is to like pass, um, but passing there wouldn't be very good because then he would just gain control of the round. Like all he did was basically just play like a uh, Igni. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I'm so I'm used to Ignis. I'm used to some, uh, scorches. Uh, there's not really any reason to be afraid to build Trent and Mirth. At least not as much as it used to be. Oh, this is the oh I almost passed it. Whoops. This is the point. So I use Brain Farn. Pull out uh, the spy. I pull this card into my hand. Everything all looks pretty good, right? So this is a uh, minus five, which makes it six. Minus four, which makes it two. Minus this two. Minus this two, which is another negative four. So this was a plus two strength advantage play. And I got to draw a card. It's pretty insane. Now keep in mind that this is, isn't really something that I could do at any point of the at any point of time. I had to do it when I'd still be above his strength total or else gaining that spy card advantage is worthless because then the card I drew from the spy just gets played in to win the round, which is still fine in certain uh, situations. But if I'm trying to maximize the value, I want to be able to have play the spy and be above his tempo so he can't just, pa so he can't just pass and nullify the advantage I just gained. So basically, by this point, once I found out, once I kind of like played out the spy... And was still above his tempo. I pretty much knew I won the game. So the, there's not a whole lot else for me to do there. Also, why did I do that? Yeah, like I'm telling you, like I was not playing on. No, I was not playing on point. I don't know why I didn't hit the spy. I'm trying to think. Like, did I, I already played Menno, right? Maybe not. I don't know. It was dumb. I, I, I'm i thinking maybe I did have a reason, but I can't actually think of it. I think I was just distracted. Yeah, I don't think I was looking for Menno. I think it was just a dumb mistake. So really good. I got tons of spying tags off with the uh, Imperium Enforcers and Brigades. I get a whole bunch of points off. He plays one more card. I'm going to play one more card. That was a really good Coral that he waste, uh, waited long enough for. So he could swing the tempo really hard in his advantage. Now hitting 10 is a little bit difficult, but knowing the cards that were on top of my deck with um, with uh, Junkov 8, I know that I'm basically, no matter what I, well, actually, that's actually wrong. 
But I basically, knowing the cards that are in my deck and the, the field that it is here, I know that basically any card in my deck is going to pass me above 10 strength. If I play, like, Brigade, it, I just hit this, and I go up, uh, that's 12. I use this, I Brigade and Enforcers, and I pretty much guarantee myself some points here. Um, You know, just, like, basically anything. that Actually, is Enforcer the only play that wouldn't do that? Because that would have been 8. Yeah. <laughs> It may have been a little bit of a risk, but it paid off. And I'm assuming whatever card he had left was not enough. Or else he would have tried to draw the last card enemy too, and then he'd still have his revived cards. Oh yeah, this guy. Okay, so this is a little bit weird. Like, this is like the weird thing, by the way, there's Meno. I guess maybe I was trying to pull into him, I don't know. It's possible. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, so I actually make a mistake here. I don't really have any other way to kill spies or to toggle the infiltrator tag. I should have dropped Menno. Uh, I think I kind of got stuck in the really old way of thinking by this point, a really old quote unquote of uh, gold bodies, but that's not really a thing anymore. I should have just dropped it for something else. Uh, so basically, my goal in this uh, this instance is to. I think this was a mistake, but I kind of see where I'm coming from. I think I was just trying to draw more cards out of him. And limit the uh, the power of his revive synergy. Even though, I don't know, there's no point. I should have just gone to the next round. And then keep uh, the 10 strength that's here, body. Also, I made a mistake. I put a uh, skirmisher back in his hand, back in his deck. That he can just use his, um, his warmonger to discard back out. And then draw again. Oh, so stupid. I wonder if he caught on to that. Or if, um, if he caught on to that, that I did that. Or if. He had more of those in his deck. Either way, if he did, if he did have more of those in the deck, and it didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't really matter. So yeah, and then he pulls off this exact same thing again. Like this deck is kind of terrifying. <laughs> I should have just passed into round three, but uh, that was just kind of my dumb mistake. Oh, so I dropped Meno right. So I kind of get like I finally you know come back to my senses. I drop Meno in my hand because it's effectively worthless. And if I do actually do need it, then I can always pull into I can pull into it with um. Or I can virtually guarantee pull into it with Kai here. So he pulls off this combo again with Warmonger. He's getting all these discard. Okay, so he had another one in his deck. So I guess it's... Oh, but if he had one less in his deck, he wouldn't have been able to pull off this combo. He would have been 11 points uh, shorter. So that was just a really stupid thing by me. Like, I wasn't paying attention to what he was actually doing or what his game plan was. And I just put a, a Warrior or Skirmish or whatever it's called back in his deck. Because I figured that would be a dead uh, dead draw in his hand if he was playing a regular discard deck. But since he wasn't, he was playing the Warmonger variant, he was able to take advantage of my dumb mistake. <laughs> so I open with this because I'm going to be playing more Spice later. I want to try and get all the hits off like, that I can here. He's going to revive his uh, Locker Dude. And stop that from happening. Oh, wait, I did have another Infiltrator. I thought I already played two in the first round. And this was pulled from my deck. Huh, weird. Anyway, so I hit this. Uh, mistake number 50 billion. I should have hit this unit instead because it has nine strength instead of eight. And you'll see how important that is in a moment. Uh, so by putting Menno back in my deck, I was able to effectively use Yakim into this, into this, into this. It all kind of like lined up in such a way that I was able to not go in on Menno unless I wanted to go in on Menno. Because Menno by default was worthless in my hand, and by putting him back in my deck, I have an opportunity to branch off from the worthless Menno into possibly worth more options. And that's exactly what happened here. And then, of course, because I played Azir, I get Roach back, which effectively won me this game. I play Meno, I kill this guy, I win by a single point. Uh, like, so many different things, like, I <laughs> made so many stupid mistakes, like giving him f uh, free 11 points. Although it may not have mattered in the grand scheme, grand scheme of things, I, was, I may have just, um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I was going to say, like, he would just would have not played the Skirmisher in round two, and I would have passed anyway. Maybe he was going to play skirm or discard the Skirmisher, or whatever it's called, in round two, and then he wouldn't have one for round three, and then I would have won by more. But anyway, so, like, as you're pulling Roach back in, my uh, my 
gold cards, whatever. <laughs> I'm so tired. Okay, I'm done. Like, I've just been playing all day. Not this game, other games. Dinoropa 3, to be specific. That's a great game. But I wanted to make sure I got at least one. Uh, I don't want to take too many, too many quote unquote days off. So that's it. I went by a single point. So many stupid mistakes. Uh, you can easily like go through the video again and just like point out all the little ones that I made. I'm pretty sure I commented on most of them. Uh, just kind of taking like a an outsider lens, more or less, on all the stupid things I was doing. Yeah, just like just really stupid mistakes that shouldn't be happening. Like I always said in a previous video, I should really be in the habit of making the best decision possible, even if I'm not paying attention. I'm not to that point, and it's kind of disappointing. Although you probably would need to really brush up on like mechanics daily, which I don't do to get to that point. Anyway, I can still point them out, though, which is fun in itself. It makes for a more interesting experience if I lose every once in a while. Not this one, the previous one. But in general, if I make mistakes, they're easy to point out and capitalize on and to... Because uh, once you, if you play like a really perfect game, and this is something I noticed when watching professional games across Hearthstone uh, and League of Legends, those two in particular, it's really difficult to learn a lot from those games because you don't actually see a lot of mistakes that you can capitalize on. Like compared to like, there's this stream on League of Legends uh, community. It's called like Salty Team or something like that. And in that instance, you can really point out and see those mistakes. Like, oh, why is this guy fighting in the minion wave? Right? You would never see that. Or you, for the most part, <laughs> I just thought of NALCS. <laughs> uh, for the most part, you wouldn't see mistakes like that in professional, high, very high EVO play, right? You would only see the very, very best of the best. And it's kind of difficult for, to learn from the best of the best, right? Because you're seeing what's perfection. You can kind of model yourself after that, but you don't really know why. You just kind of mimic it. But if you see the mistakes happening, you have it explained out and you kind of think about it. You're like, oh, that's why. You don't fight in the minion way because you take all the damage from the minions. You would never really discover why you did. You may not necessarily discover. This is just a whatever example. Uh you may not discover why you wouldn't do that in League of Legends because you're just you like pros don't do it, so I don't do it, right? Uh, and like in Hearthstone, you may do something like uh, you save a weapon, you don't hit with the weapon on the first turn. Well, why don't you do it with the weapon on the first turn? Well, if you notice if someone hits with the weapon on the first turn, uh, you know they're one three weapon or whatever. Then as it happens, they don't have a weapon to use later on, and they're stuck with uh, they can't. Or, you know, they're playing Rogue and they can't re, uh, re weapon up because they used the weapon earlier, which only did one damage to face. And what's one damage to face? That's nothing. And it's hard to see that mistake. It's hard to see why you should do that if you don't actually see that mistake happen. You only mimic that when you go into your own play and you say, okay, I'm not going to use my weapon uh, for the most part, right? And then you don't know when you should and when you shouldn't. It's kind of convoluted and kind of rambly, but I hope it got the, kind of the general point across. Make mistakes, <laughs> basically. That's how you improve. <laughs> Don't watch high yellow players if you want to improve. Watch people like me who are bad at this game. Thanks for watching.